up everybody welcome to another can you take it film festival this one has been a long time in the making uh, today we're taking on our longest festival um, it's only six movies but we're gonna be here uh, the movie runtime is 13 and a half hours I think right Adam? Yep. yeah 13 and a half so uh, we're doing Star Wars today all six Star Wars movies back to back we're gonna do a review for each one um, I'm Dan got Adam Brandon Jonathan Dustin Michael we got Michael Michael's uh, this is your first Can You Take It festival. That's right. Uh, what are you expecting? Uh, pain. Pain, lots of pain. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to stick to a pretty uh, tight schedule today uh, to get it all in. Um, I think all of us are very familiar with these movies. Uh, I think the original trilogy probably had an impact on all of us in a very positive way. And the opposite can be said for the prequels. <laughs> Tell me what versions we're going to be watching. We're watching the Blu-ray versions. So all of the, the changes. Version. Yeah, so every change that he's put in. Uh, so because far. We like to make it hard. So uh, far. <laughs> uh, I, I, I foresee uh, some anger uh, coming, especially with the older films, because he, he, I haven't seen some of these newer changes he's made. So. Well, we need something to keep us, you know, looking for something right we're starting with the prequels right we're going to the original trilogy last so one episode one through six so if we didn't watch the change movies it might be a little easier but we'd probably get bored because we're so right. familiar with them right. so now we can look for all the changes oh yeah we're and some of them are George's pretty vision. bad yes, yes. Uh, George wanted it we wanted we're going to watch this, this as George it had originally you. intended it to <laughs> when he wrote all six of these scripts back in 1977 <laughs> so uh, we will uh, get started here on episode one and uh, we'll see you on the other side you did it aren't you <laughs> Just finished up Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Let's say some positive things about it first. Okay. What did we like? Sound mix. Music. Sound mix was great. Music was good. Music, Music, Music was, was good. good. Darth Maul was a, was a well-designed villain. He looked really cool. Um, it's a some, short list. Some of the costumes. Some were of the good. costumes yeah. were cool. And the fact that there's a lot of, you know... There's some practical, there's some set pieces, there's Here and there, yeah. physical vehicles, and... The yeah. fight is still, even though I agree, you made a good point of saying how the choreograph, you can tell it's more choreographed than, say, an Empire or whatever, but I think how, <laughs> sitting through how bad, you know, 90% of it is, I still enjoy the fight. I mean, the, if, if you remove that fight... My problem with the fighting in all of the prequels is that... They, they have a fight, but there's nothing really that they're fighting for, you know? Like, there's yeah. no... Somebody's tension. just blocking them. Yeah, it's just, it's so fast that there's, there's no thought in it. Like, you get a sense that almost like Luke is like, well, let's show what the Jedi can really do without really giving them the reason why they're doing it in the first place or yeah. why they would be that way. I mean, I yeah. can see that. It's, less is more. Yeah, it's a lot of... Wasted effort. Yeah. yeah, this film is a lot of wasted effort, a lot of um, let down. I think, you know, we can't talk about this film without bringing up, uh, as we were watching it, how we all felt when the movie came out. And uh, a lot of us uh, had a bit of denial, I think, that it was... Well, we were also 13 and 14. We were 13 and 14, but nonetheless, I knew it wasn't that good. Right. But I still couldn't really... I couldn't bring myself to hate it as much uh, that I do now. Well, there was still hope because, hey, there's two more on the way. Maybe this one kind of sucks. I agree. Because they had to have him as a kid in this one. Yeah. And, you know, but when he gets older, it's going to be badass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how yeah, wrong we were. I, know. I remember so many people saying that. I was like, well, he was a kid in this one. He's going to get older, so it'll be more mature and better. Yeah. And it's like, oh, boy. It'll, it'll get, get more dark. wrong. And there are instances in history where someone's been com given complete creative control. You know, this is one of them. 
And another example of that would be Orson Welles. Yeah. You know, Citizen Kane. Right. It can go either way. Or Kubrick. Yeah. I mean, or Kubrick, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you have a man here who, honestly, I have so much respect for George Lucas on, on so many different levels. But he should never be completely unleashed. And he wasn't unleashed on the original trilogy. Right. No. He was uh, very much uh, reined in with the money. Uh, he didn't want to, you know, there was a budget. There, there probably was no budget on this. I mean, you could just do whatever you want. And that was one of the problems. Yeah, a budget, or no budget stifles creativity. Exactly. Plus, you're, plus, you're trying to prove yourself. I think when you don't, you haven't gotten the feeling of like I'm George Lucas. Yeah, he probably had to put everything into it, even if there were mistakes. And and everyone's gonna that, say yes, Mr. yes, Lucas. yes, yeah. man, exactly. yes, man syndrome. I find that running rampant nowadays. I, I find that problem with the Hobbit. I think that's a yes, oh, man yeah. syndrome oh, yeah. kind oh, of yeah. thing. Well, nobody saying no after the success of the of the original films. Right. Uh, yeah. He comes into this and he's able to direct. And this this is my argument against the. Uh, use of so much computer-generated imagery, he can use his influence to funnel the uh, producing company's funds into his own special effects company. Yep. The same thing yeah. that Kim Jackson did for with the win. Hobbit films. Yeah. Well, it's financially, shitty. it's like he, it's a win-win. I mean, Save it money. can be a shitty movie, and it still makes a fuck ton of money because it's Star Wars, you right. know? Yeah. And so, if you're a producer on these movies, you may not like the movie, but it doesn't matter because you're still going to make it. Yeah, think you're about gonna it. That's make a good point. Rain. I mean, like any of us in our minds, we didn't go into any doubt that this was going to be good. Could oh be my bad. God, no, no, it couldn't be bad. No way. It could not be bad because George Lucas could do no wrong for me. Right. I, I can remember the moment when I realized that he created Indiana Jones and Star Wars. I can remember that night when I saw his name on the end of Young Indiana Jones, and I said, "What?" Well, he made both. Those were my favorite things ever. And right. he made both of them. He, he could do no wrong. Oh, no, he got elevated to a level. And then you, that's what, to me, that has got to be a huge reason why people would be in denial. Yes. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, exactly. I was in, I've told you all about myself, I was in huge denial. Oh, you don't have to tell years. us. We're, we're there. We were friends. I was the most <laughs> in denial. We, we saw it and talked with you about it. Oh, well, and, it was, and also at the time, right before the prequels, you remember, the special editions hit theaters. So yeah. we got to see everything on the big screen for right, the first time right. in our lives. And yeah, they added the little extras, but. They sucked. Yeah, but I don't think we were so we were focused on that. Right. At the time. We were the too time. young to be like, oh, that doesn't look good. Because. That was in the era where, you know, the Jurassic Parks and the Forrest Gumps and people were like, what can we do to make CG enhanced movies? Yeah. And so he was probably thinking, well. My biggest issue with that, and we've talked about this a lot, is that uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, Ted Turner attempted to colorize a bunch of old classic films. And George Lucas was one of the people that went in front of Congress and appealed to have him stopped so that he could not alter classic cinema. And he becomes the greatest villain in this story as he goes and, and he, um, he, he destroys classic cinema, his own films. And I think... Spielberg, it's kind of meta. Spielberg kind of like, reversed all that. He yeah, changed yeah. all of that for the Blu-rays. He removed the, all of those additions. The walkie-talkies. Yeah. Yes. All of that was removed because he saw the error in his ways. Oh, well, maybe um, Lucas will... See. No, no, he will never see. He will never admit he's wrong. Never. Uh, I think of his we, hands at this point anyway. Right. And I think we need to address that if this is the first part of your story, yeah. it's a horrible way to get started. Yeah. There's no introduction to anyone. There's no pacing or plotting to make me care for these characters. It ends poorly. It begins poorly. It, it is completely a, a lesson in structuring a film properly. And it has none. And it's just ultimately just a flat piece. I mean, you have Liam Neeson, who's a great actor. You have Ewan McGregor, who's a great actor. Yeah, Natalie Lee Portman Lee. got her Oscar. And every Terrence Stamp. You know, Terrence you Stamp. have people wandering through these scenes, looking genuinely confused, with they don't know what's actually happening around them. Yeah. And they don't know what's going on in the plot. They don't know what's going on. In and the they movie. have the benefit of actual sets in this one. Yes. It yeah. gets even worse when they're just. Acting in front of green surroundings, and that's well, it. You said it when we were watching it. Besides, you know, stale performances, the fact that you don't care about these characters, what would 
what should they have done in terms of changing? If you wanted to make it work just in general, what do you think is the biggest mistake they make? With well, this? the biggest mistake they make was, was introducing not only Anakin as a child, but the massive amount of children appealing things. There's an idea in Hollywood, it still occurs today, that children are stupid and that we have to pander to them. And when you look at films made in the 80s, even further back, there were things made for children that treated them like they could understand the story. Yeah. And these movies don't do that. The, the Jar Jar stuff, the Pod Race stuff, every bit of it seems to be designed to sell toys, to sell video games, to market this shit to kids. And yeah. to make kids feel like they can accidentally be heroes. Yes. There's so many accidental save the day moments in this movie. It's, it's not even funny. It's like yeah. fucking Home Alone in space. Do you think this is like a decision by George Lucas or do you think people were Marketing. pressuring him to market to make more money? And Lucas, I think, was, was a big part of it. Yeah, because he, he was that way with the early movies. Exactly. Like, he retained the marketing rights for the original trilogy back then and he made a fortune on so he's a greedy bastard, by the way. He is, but I don't know that greedy... Like, to say he's greedy is to look over all the amazing things that he's done. We have digital film editing. We have the sound design. We have CG, mainly because of George Lucas putting that money that he made back into developing new technology. I go as far to say I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for George Lucas, because he created... Uh, so much of the technology that I use. And I, I never get the sense that he does it for the money. He does it for his ego, I think, more than a lot anything. Of it, yeah. Like, he's always looking at kind of his legacy, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think Spielberg does too. I think Spielberg just chooses to put his legacy more in this, the films he makes. Right. Whereas Lucas is looking at, like... Box office. Yeah, just, like, his impact on, like, the cultural, you right. know, Everything mindset. Well, the, yeah. Quote, yeah. the quote from behind the scenes from the first film was, we're never going to beat Titanic. Yeah. I mean, right. what beat Titanic at what? What box office? Obviously. Exactly. That's, that's, if you ever were to corner Lucas, he will never back down on these films because he, all he has to say is look at the box office. To him, that is success. And I think Star Wars is a perfect example of one of the things that frustrates me as a film fan is the fervor that takes over franchise mentality. And when you had the original trilogy, anything Star Wars was just going to do good forever because it was so loved. And that has been adopted at a... There's Pirates of the Caribbean, Fast and the Furious. I mean, we watch these film series because of franchises, and usually that's because they get worse and worse and worse. But now you see them get better and more money put into them. But, but it is not being made for the love of it. Like, the people that are involved may have a passion, but in the end, well, it's to make money. It's kind of like you're talking about like with Marvel. Like, I don't think anybody would say that Marvel has been doing terrible. They've been very successful. But at the same time, you look at of all their films they've been making, I think there's a real reason why Guardians did so well. It's because yeah. it was not held to every setting up everything right. else. It was on its own. So right. you see it going on in the right way, and you can still find ways of it going on the wrong way. Well, movies now, it seems like, you know, they're so concerned with the bottom line that it's, you know, it never feels like this was made by an individual filmmaker. Everything feels like it was made by a studio right. or a company or a board of directors. Right. I mean, it's a very corporate approach yeah. to can, filmmaking. You can feel the guy sitting around the table. Yeah, and it's like so many, out. I ideas. mean, I'm sure this is going to occur a lot today as we go through these, but if you look at the original trilogy, you can see the different voices of the different directors. Yeah. You can see the different vision of, of their film. And um, that is not going to be present in these, in these first three. How do you predict that? Well, because it seems like they are going back to that route with these new ones since they've already announced yes. that JJ is yes. not doing the other exactly. ones. Exactly. It's a great idea. And the reason it's a great idea is because you're bringing in a fresh take exactly. yeah. on yeah. something. And that's one reason I always love the Aliens you know, exactly. franchise more They're than... They're all different. Like, even as a kid, I liked Aliens more because it felt like this is each person's interpretation right. of this universe. Right. And uh, where Star Wars, it's uh, it's not quite like that. I know it we was. Yeah, 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 yeah right, exactly. I know we don't always, like, 
put a rating when we do these, but I have to ask <laughs> yes. for these. F. Yeah. Fail. All right, but he likes. I'm that. liking out of ten. Like a no, ten scale. is a stupid way to rate films. You know why rating films to ten is stupid? Why? Because you'll never give anything under a five. What would you give it? Though? You have to do everything at least by a five point scale. Otherwise, it's the lowest score possible. And I would give it the lowest score possible based on, and people might disagree with me that there's worse movies. Of course there's worse movies. But those worst movies didn't have everything this movie had. Yeah, but and they didn't have the, the budget. They didn't have the actors. This is a wasted opportunity to such a degree that I can't think of any other film that makes me this angry. The legacy behind it gave you reason to say, hey... Avatar doesn't make me this angry. Really? Yeah. No! no yeah. Avatar, well, that's because it's a standalone piece. They, they didn't do it. it that, that, I didn't it. show up with as a 14-year-old, uh, you know, wide-eyed and excited to, to go into this. Uh, Star Wars, to me as a kid, was the imagination that I lived in. The toys, the books... Uh, that I looked at the cover. I mean, I wasn't going to fucking read them, but I looked at the cover, you know? Uh, <laughs> but just that universe was everything we talked about at school was Star Wars. All my friends, it was Star Wars. Uh, we can remember me and a buddy memorizing the opening crawl to A New Hope just because we wanted to. Um, and then he, he made these films, and I know it shouldn't mean that much. That's stupid. But it did mean that much. And it's exciting to see that we could be going somewhere else new, uh, but it's as well disappointing to see this story. I think everyone here, at some point in their childhood, imagined what the story of Anakin Skywalker would be, and to have it be delivered so poorly by the man who created him, is just, it's uh, mind-boggling uh, to me. The, the message for this film, or just for the prequels in general, is, like you said, wasted opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with that, well, it's sad class. to know that kids grew up on these, and that's their standard of what right. they think a good sci-fi movie right. is, or right. whatever. You know, it's like hopefully with the you know this new movement that uh, you know the new kid, the kids now, they'll have an opportunity to maybe get some good Star Wars again and reflect, I, I think and so. reflect themselves and be like, okay, maybe these weren't as good as I thought they were going to. Yeah, be. I think maybe that is the, to which the the standard we grew up with and. Uh, I hope it returns to that, but it's about to get more painful. It's about to get more painful. We're um, going full digital. We're boots. going all in. Uh, if I, my memory serves me, this was the first film ever to be shot digitally. It was screened digitally, and uh, I, I think I also, I don't think they actually had any actors in this film. Everyone was CG. <laughs> it's just a CG movie. Pixar made this movie. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, we have, throughout the entire first one, have been saying, oh, God, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. We know it's going to get worse. So here we go. We're going into episode two. Um, so we'll see you on the other side.